technology course and we have discussed about the various uh, processes which are being done in petroleum refining. And today we will be discussing one of the very important topic in case of the petroleum refining because uh, the importance is increasing because of the stringent environmental standards are being imposed and at the same time sensitivity of the catalyst. So, desulfuration process and recovery of the sulphur. This is a typical sulphur recovery plant of the IOC Panipat. Coverage of the lecture, the lecture that will contain about the introduction, sulphur requirement in different gasoline and diesel, because this is the one of the driving force which is requiring the desulfuration process and at the same time the requirement of the catalyst, because the catalyst which we are using in the various process they are very sensitive. So, we need the desulfuration process. So, that is also second actually driving force apart from the sulphur requirement in the gasoline and diesel. Worldwide crude oil quality, because you see the crude oil quality is varying. Earlier it, we used to get the C, uh, sweet crude, low sulphur crude, but now the with the coming of the heavier crude, the sulphur content that is increasing even the crude which we have got in Rajasthan that is high tan crude and with high sulphur. Reactivity of the sulphur compound, because what is happening during the treatment process, the reactivity of the various sulphur compounds which are present that also poses problem in removal. So, that is the we will be discussing in uh, brief about the reactivity of the various sulphur compounds with a markup into thiophene that is present and so. Um, how they are reacting during the diesel sulfur output, because there are various sources of the why we need the desulfuration, why we need the sulfur recovery plant, because huge amount of the sulf uh, SO2 gas or H2S gas or the other gases um, that is being generated. And so, what are the various sources, because in all the processes as we discussed earlier in the previous lectures, whether it was the catalytic reforming or the FCC or the uh, your this hydro cracking. In all the process, the prerequisite was treatment of the uh, feed stock before it was going to the main process, because the sulphur that is one of the highly poison catalyst poison material and so removal that was very important. And so, the various sources what a process used to remove sulphur from the different product. Sulphur recovery units characteristic, Merox process, Merox uh, sulphur recovery from H2S, because there has been continuous development in case of the sulphur recovery processes, because what has happened? The conventional cross process is still the emission, some of this emission of the um, sulphur compounds for there, to how to minimize that uh, emission. So, the super class process and some new development that has taken place in the, because the class tail gas that was also containing and so to how to treat that class tail gas. So, we will be discussing about the class tail gas treatment process, some of the other development which has taken place that is the super soul process that has been developed by Indian Oil Corporation, that is the indigenous technology that we are having. Introduction about the why we need this, the desulfuration process or the sulfur recovery and why it has become important. Sulfur compound hydrogen sulfide, mercaptan, disulfide, thiopines are inherently present in the natural gas and the crude oil, and their presence, even in a small quantity, is undesirable, must be removed to PPM level in order to avoid catalyst poisoning, reducing the corrosion problem, and meet the environmental standards, because the corrosion problem is also one of the severe problem, because of the coming of the high tan crude oil and at the same time high sulphur crude oil. The level of the sulphur as I told you that has been increasing. So, the level of the sulphur in the past two decades has steadily increased due to use of more and more heavier crude use of cheaper high sulphur crude 
which has forced the refining, uh, refining industry to go for additional facility like ultra desulfurization for gasoline and diesel to meet the requirement of the stringent sulfur emission standards. Because whatever the products you are getting whether it is the diesel, kerosene or gasoline that has to be um, that has to be desulfurized before it is going for the end use. And so, the these are the some of the driving force which has led to the development of the various sulfur recovery process or the desulfurization process. Sulfur is the one of the major impurities in the heavy crude resulting higher concentration of sulfur compound in the undesulfurized product stream. Product stream is not the final product only, but also the feed stock to the various processes like uh, FCC, hydro cracking, catalytic reforming, already we have discussed what are, because before it is going to the main reactor, uh, the feed is pre-treated and then even after the uh, products which you are getting, they make contain the traces of the sulfur compound and to meet the environmental standards of the 50 ppm definitely the product has to be treated. Sulfur contained in the crude varies widely depending on the origin because the, this also varying from one place to another, one well to another and one region to another. So, that the wide variation we found in the crude oil quality also with respect to sulfur. The variation is considerable and this impact the process scheme as well as the products like. Due to increasing environmental concern, stringent limit on sulfur levels in fuel are be, being implemented whatever, whether you take the, there has been continuous reduction in the SO2 emission uh, as per the euro norm that is euro 1, euro 2, euro 3 and euro 4 and now to achieve the 50 ppm that has a big challenge for the refinery to achieve target of the sulfur 50 ppm deep desulfurization. So, ultra desulfurization, deep desulfurization, hydro desulfurization is required which is an additional capital cost, always an energy intensive step and sometimes the loss of the your hydrocarbon is also there. Uh, this is the I was telling the why we are going for the desulfurization process. If you see these figures from the 2000 to the changes which is taking place, now the PIC standard 1000 it was earlier, Bharat 2 it was 500, Euro 2, Euro 3, 150, Euro 4, 50. So, that is the level of the SO2 that has to be maintained in the gasoline or the diesel. So, definitely you see that there is lot of the change in the standards also. So, this is one of the reason why we are going for the recovery of the sulphur and at the same time you see the sulphur that is also one of the very important feed stock for the various um, chemical plant. Only problem that the generation of the sulphur which is there, it is not so huge as it is required whether it is by sulphuric acid or other plant. Uh, this is the word by the crude quality, how it is changing and if you see the 1985 to 2010, the sulphur contained crude oil variety from lighter to heavier sulphur in the residue that is also increasing. So, these are the some of the problems which needs the desulfurization of the product desulfurization of the feed stock to the various process and uh, during the this distribution the from the various system we are getting because one of the major source of the sulfur in the refinery is the FCC. If you see the FCC because the uh, feed stock which is going to it is pre treated. So, one of the major source of the um, sulfur is the uh, FCC. This is the sulfur contained of the various crude which indigenous crude and uh, other crude that is there here it is the Bombay high 0 0.1, Bonnie 0 0.1 or heavy 2.87. So, you can see the wide variation is there in the case of the sulphur content in the crude. There are basically four type of the crudes available around the world that already we discussed we are having the light sweet, light sore, heavy sore, 
extra heavy sulfur. So, this is how the sulfur contained that is varying a p i gravity that is varying in case of the light weight is 30 to 40, light sore is 30, but in case of the heavy sore it is more heavier p d stock is there. So, this is how the changes that is taking place in the crude oil availability and the future it is uh, expected that more and more heavier crude oil that will be available and you will have to adjust your processing scheme in the refinery accordingly just to meet the environmental standards because definitely now you will have to supply the fuel of the Euro 4 norms in even in India. So, how to some of the refinery already and they are ready to supply the fuel of the Euro 4 norm. So, th definitely these are the some of the changes that is taking place in the refinery processes because of the coming of the um, heavier crude or the high sulphur crude. These are the I was telling the reactivity of the sulphur compound, relative reaction rate, boiling point of the various component which is creating lot of problem in case of the. So, depending upon the you see the removal of the uh, mark of uh, dimethyl sulphide Sul, uh, sulfide that is more easier than the thiopene or the benzothiopene. Now, let us discuss what are the sources from where the sulphur is coming in the steam. So, sulphur contained in the finished product, sulphur emission into atmosphere in, in form of the SO2. This is coming to the because this is we are discussing about the sulphur output from the refinery, sulphur recovery in sulphur recovery unit because earlier you see the uh, clause process or the modified process have been up to 97 percent. So, some of the sulphur compound is still remaining. So, because of that reason now we are going for this there is, has been development in the sulphur recovery unit to achieve maximum removal of the sulphur compound. Sulphur distribution in typical refinery is sulfur in the various products 58 percent, product sulfur 41 percent, sulfur emission 1 percent. So, you see the major uh, contributor are the products and the various uh, products which you are getting from the refinery operation. These are the some of the sources uh, which need the removal of the sulfur and we are doing the desulphurization for removing the sulphur, LPG treating unit where we are removing the sulphur because these are the all the gases which are removing again they are going further processing for the removal of these gases from the gas stream and then finally, it is going to the recovery of the sulphur by class modify class or any other modification. So, gasoline treating hydro treating unit this is also again the hydro desulphurization process, emission turbine fuel, merox process and hydro treating that we are doing diesel, hydro treating process is there, hydro desulphurization, sulphur lands up in the fuel gas as H 2 S during the hydro treating processes. H 2 S in the fuel gas produces S O X while burning in the fire heater, environmental 50 ppm while burning the fuel gas. This is the environmental standard of the emission. Hydro treatment process. Hydro treatment of the various system from refining and the petrochemical industry has become integral part in order to meet the feed standards of the various processes in order to avoid catalyst poisoning, improving the quality of the product and meet the environmental standards. Hydro processing technology consists of any one of the uh, various process that we are using that may be the pre treatment, it may be the hydro cracking processes, hydro treatment of the fuels and lubricants. So, these are the some of the um, hydro treatment process, pre treatment of the hydro treatment of the naphtha and gas oil residue for the catalytic uh, residue from the catalytic reforming, catalytic cracking and the hydro cracking in order to remove the import is sulfur, nitrogen, heavy metal etcetera hydro cracking processes, hydro treatment of the fuels and the lubricant. Uh, this is the actually the if you see the what are the major sources of the sulphur and recovery process in the refinery, the crude oil distillation unit, 
FCC or the residue fluid catalytic cracking gases, LPG, hydro cracker, hydro, treat, uh, hydro treat, uh, treating gases, coker, fine gases and the LPG. So, these are the some of the sources which uh, normally from the gases we are having the amine absorption and then the amine re regeneration, the gases after the final removal that is going to the sulphur recovery, we are getting the sulphur, it is the, even the tail gases which are there that is going for the further removal and the final it is going to insulation. And the uh, definitely uh, one of the another source in the refinery because of the processing of the sore uh, crude that is the sore water from the various steam. So, the sore water that the gases from the sore water by steeping that is removed and then again it is going to the sulphur recovery plant. This is the actually the same process that we discussed. Sulphur recovery units characteristic small to medium size sulphur recovery units from a few tons to a few <coughs> hundred tons for day quality refinery because the sulphur content is low, the sulphur production is less, but in case of the uh, Reliance Jamnagar where they are processing more heavier feed stock, the production of the sulphur is high. Sulphur recovery units, feed composition varies linked to the refinery operating mode and crude feed stock. High flexibility is required, multiple tens, acid gas always reach high H2 content, ammonia from the sore water is steeper always present sometimes in the relatively high quantity, because ammonia that we are using uh, in case of the uh, distillation column, crude distillation column or even in case of the FCC also for as a um, for um, to come to get rid of the corrosion problem. <coughs> so, these were the some of the sources we discussed about the um, from where the uh, actually the sour gases are the sulphur gases that is coming and the now let us discuss about the sulphur recovery unit. Sulphur recovery unit consists of recovery of sulphur from H2S present in acid gas from amine treating regeneration unit and H2S from the sore water stepping section which I told you that the, there are two sources, one the all the gases that is going to the amine absorption and after the amine absorption again the um, after regeneration of the amine the gas steam that, um, that is going for the treatment and other the source of the sore gas H2S that may be from the water steeper section from the sore water. Hydrogen sulphide content of the feed gas is converted to elemental sulphur because this is the how we can get rid of the sulphur compound. So, I mean absorption regeneration that is the process which I told you because first step that is the absorption of H2S bearing steam and regeneration of amine. H2S reaches steam from amine regeneration is sent to the sulphur recovery unit for recovery of the sulphur from the gas. Now, let us discuss because this is the Merox process that is the integral part of the refinery and in all the refinery they are having Merox process. So, the Merox process is used in the refinery for controlling the mercaptan sulphur in gases, LPG, naphtha and other petroleum fractions. The process is used for chemical treatment of LPG, gasoline and distillate from the FCC or the hydrocracker unit that may be once through or the two stage that is OHCU means the once through and uh, FCCU means the uh, fluid catalytic cracking unit to remove the Mercaptans. Mercaptans are either extracted from the steam or sweetened to acceptable disulfide because the disulfide smell is not there and 
but removal the both the marked substance and disulfide that has to be removed. For treatment of the light feed stock such as LPG, no sweetening is required as marked are nearly removed by extraction. So, that is the um, two types of the method which I told you the extraction and the sweetening that is the uh, you can remove the markup tent or the from the gas stream. However, feed containing higher molecular weight markup tent and may require a combination of merox extraction and sweetening using the catalyst because they are in the process of the sweetening use catalyst. Catalyst promote the oxidation of the markup tent to disulfide using air as the source of oxygen. Merox treatment can in general be used in the following ways to improve the lead susceptibility of light gasoline, but that problem is not there. To improve the response of the gasoline because we already lead has um, phase out. To improve the response of the gasoline stock to oxidation inhibitors added to prevent gum formation during storage to improve odor in all the stack gas. Merox treatment unit can in general be used to meet the product treatment, to reduce the sulfur content, to reduce the sulfur content of the coker FCC olefin to save acid consumption in alkylation process. Uh, this is the process that we are using the pretreatment, extraction and the sweetening. So, this is the method, these are the reaction that is taking place. You are treating with the NMH, sweetening, oxidation, um, this markup tends to disulfide that is taking place. So, these are the some of the reaction which are taking place in extraction and the this is the caustic we are using for the extraction. So, in the extraction and the sweetening process. Sulfur recovery from H2S because uh, what about this H2S that you are getting? The conversion of the H2S or markup into the sulfur that is very important. The sulfur recovery now has become one of the most critical aspects of the sulfur management and affects the emission sulfur dioxide significantly in the refined because if you are not properly removing, so this S, SO2 emission that will be there and even it is not the requirement of the fuel only, it is the requirement of the refinery stack gases emission also to have the lower sulfur dioxide in the uh, stack gases. And there are standards are of course, that they are the for the emission of the SO2 or emission of the particulate matter from the FCC which is one of the main sources and that is available in the standards uh, given by the Center Portion Control Board. Now, let us discuss about the sulfur recovery in more detail. There are two sulfur recovery process that is the class process, the conventional class process used earlier. Now, we are talking about the super class process because you, you see the in case of the class process, the removal of the sulfur common that was less and the recovery part that was less and so this tail this tail gases was containing a lot of the sulfur compound and so to just to minimize that uh, emission again the con, uh, the conventional class process that has been modified. The conventional class process has only even 99 or 97 to 99 percent sulfur recovery. In order to meet the sulfur emission standards, now class process has been improved substantially to meet the standard. New process are characterized by new catalytic, COS and carbon sulfide hydrolysis, increased recovery, direct conversion of H2S to sulfur by oxidation that is what we are doing in case of the super class process. Uh, this is the typical sulfur recovery unit, the sour gas that is going to gas treating in it, sweet gases, then the acid gases that will go to the recovery unit class process, then the 
tail gases from the class buses. Again, that will go to the further treatment. So, tail gas cleanup unit, additional recovery, then the finally you are getting the sulfur and the gases that will go up incineration and then to the chimney. So, this is the process that we are uh, having in case of the typical sulfur recovery unit and here you see the tail gases, because this was the additional modification that, um, um, that has been done with the coming of the stringent standards and so the sulfur recovery tail gas that is treated and the finally, the sulfur compounds that can be used in the various processes. Let us now discuss in case, uh, the class process in more detail. Class process is vapor phase oxidation process using alumina catalyst. In the class process, H2S is born to form which reacts uh, with H2S to form elemental sulfur. Sulfur is formed in vapor phase in combustion chamber. The sulfur vapors are condensed and drained to sulfur pit in the waste boiler, the generating steam. In, in class process, the recovery is around 95 to 97 percent. If you are having super class, then the um, your efficiency that is go, going high. So, the function of the class process, this is the uh, these are the some of the reaction that is made at the catalytic region and this is the hyd which hydrolysis part which I was telling this US and this C S 2 and the H 2 S finally, that is oxidized to elemental sulphur. This is the burning process which is taking place. This is the furnace of the super class reactor where the you are generating the sulphur compound. Class process limitations. Thermodynamic is the limited conversion. The air to clean gas ratio is maintained to produce an ratio of the exactly 2 by 1 optimum ratio in the burner effluent gases. Increase H2 contain to 30 volume percent, decreasing H2S and SO2 concentration. Formation of the non recoverable sulfur compound due to side reaction. So, these are the some of the limitations in case of the class process. So, let us now discuss about the super class process which I told you, because uh, the problem in case of the uh, class process removal efficiency that was around 95 to 96 you can say um, and the, the further removal that was necessitated and so the tail gases again uh, removal of the sulphur from the tail gases that has been carpal. So, super class process was developed to categorically recover elemental sulphur containing class tail gas to improve the overall sulphur recovery level in the defined. The super class process was commercially demonstrated in 1998 and today now more than 160 units are under license and over 140 are in operations. Super class process achieve high sulfur recovery levels by suppressing SO2 formation in the class stage and selectivity of oxidizing H2S in presence of oxygen using the propriety catalyst. Uh, this is the modified uh, class process. Here you see the H2S that is going to free flame reactor, oxygen stream it is going to waste heat boiler, catalytic converter, sulfur condenser from where we are getting the sulfur and further treatment of the waste gas that is going. So, this is the modified class process then. So, the what are the various actually units in case of the super class process? Combustion 7, class reactor, super class reactor, incinerator and degassing section. Super class process use selective oxidation catalyst minimizes the side stream and increase the sulfur recovery. New development in the class tail gas treatment process. In the conventional class and its modified version 
process 90 to 97 percent because I told you the 95, 90 that is on hard side. Depending upon the efficiency of the clause process, the emission that may be the um, your uh, conversion that may be as low as 90 percent of the H2S and SO2 is born. However, the remaining H2S and SO2 remains in the tail gas. That is the problem. That was the problem in case of the uh, conventional class process. Due to higher environmental regulation, there has been continuous development in the process and tail gas treatment processes. So these are the some of the processes developed for the treatment of the gases: dry bed process, Lurgi sulfine process, amico cold bed absorption, direct oxidation of H2S, liquid phase sub dew point process that the class ball process. This is the another process that we are using in case of the um, liquid redox process. These process use solution of the chemically chilted metal ion to oxidize s 2 s to elemental sulfur. So, these are the some of the commercial process which are available state 4 process, sulfurine process, sulfrex process, low cat process, castal process. These are the some of the processes that are available um, to meet the required environmental standards. Then the another process which has been developed by super sore process that was by Indian Aral Corporation in India that is the R and D center they have developed this super sore process. I will be discussing the super process also. Medicam technology has also been developed that is the by IOC also, biological desulfurization process that is the bioabsorption process, sulfur G process that is by the Gujarat Narmada fertilizer corporation in India. So, they are using this process sulfur G process for removal of the sulfur compound. Super class, the big difference between the super class catalyst and class catalyst is that the reaction is not equilibrium based. Therefore, the conversion efficiency is much higher than the equilibrium limited class reaction. Another feature of the super class process, super class is a non cyclic process that has repeatedly shown simplicity in operation, high online reliability and sulfur guarantees up to 99.3 percent. Now, let us discuss the super sore process which has been developed by Indian Oil Corporation. Stringent environmental regulation has restricted high recovery of the h 2 from the sore water is per unit because you see the sore water that is also one of the major source as I discussed from in the refinery because we are treating uh, high sulfur crude oil in the very in the um, process and so the during the removal in the various section the sore water that is generated and the sore water from the sore water of the stripping the gases um, that is going for the for the treatment. So, super sore process ensures minimum H2S loss, the process employ additional hot feed flash drum up steam of the cold feed surge drum. Super sore process is a novel process approach for enhanced recovery of H2S from sore gas. The process has been developed by process engine group of Indian Oil Corporation. Super sore process based on indigenous technology has been commissioned in the IOC Gujarat refinery in 2010 because there are also a lot of the problem in Gujarat refinery in emission of the sore gases, um, emission of the sulfur compound from this uh, sore water and so the process that was developed by um, UIC that has been commissioned there. The design helps in meeting the stringent environmental regulation of SO2 emission. Every ton of the sulphur re recovered will eliminate 2 tons of the SO2 going to the atmosphere. 
so this is the how the um, recovery part that is very important uh, this is the actually the conventional process uh, and the composition of the supersol process conventional process flash dump to remove the hydrocarbon vapor and liquid from the sore water and the, they are having the feed tank and this deeper here actually some modification that has been done this is conventional because normally we are having the we are doing the stripping of the um, sore water and so these are the some of the units there but if you see the compare this with uh, your super sore process so this is the some of the additional unit that and we had a hard flash dump to liberate the enough estuaries from this feed sore water so, this is the additional unit. Amine is covered to recover S2S and ammonia from the hard flash dump. Flash dump, feed tank, and steeper. Because these are the, uh, that is also there in case of the conventional uh, processes which where you are stepping, we are treating the sore water. But in case of the super, we have one hard flash dump that has been added and amine scrubber is there so that the emission that is so this is the advantage and the difference in case of the conventional process and the super sore process uh, in case of the super sore process the stress is vapors from the hot feed flash dump upstream of the cold feed range such dump is rooted to a small amine absorber to absorb the liberated h 2 So, that is the, uh, I was telling that the additional limit which are having in case of the super class process, that is the, uh, this the amine from the recover from the, this part. So, that is going to the amine scrubber and then the better removal efficiency is there. The h 2 lean gas containing primarily hydrocarbon then routed to incinerator of the sulfur recovery unit. The absorbed S2S rich amine is recovered in the amine regenerator and is fed to the sulfur unit for recovering the converting the sulfur to elemental sulfur. So, this is the process that they are using for the sore water. Another technology that is um, that has been developed that the Mericam fiber film contactor technology even this technology that has been also um, developed by Indian Oil Corporation. The process is based on the continuous film contactor, fiber film contactor technology for removal of the impurities from hydrocarbon steam. So, this is the a new development in the sulfur recovery process. The process achieve non disturbing phase contact without problem inherent in the conventional dispersive mixing devices. So, this is one of the because the contacting uh, that improves because of the um, continuous film contactor. So, this was about the uh, sulfur recovery desulfization process and you see the um, as the our standards are becoming more and more stringent. So, the definitely the desulfization process and the sulfur recovery section of the refinery that is going to play very important role because definitely the standards because the euro 4 we are having the 50 ppm SO2 we do not know what will happen in euro 4, euro 5 and euro 6 in the future because and at the same time the amount of the sulphur which is released which is produced in the refinery that will increase with the utilization of more and more crude oil which is available from the various sources. Now, actually the, there has been also the um, uh, reason why the refinery as I discussed earlier also that the refineries now many of the refineries they are going for the heavier crude also because that is cheaper than the sweet crude and so they are having the brain um, whatever the crude oil we are processing in the refinery that is not only from the single stream, but it is blend of the, because definitely that will have to, um, our requirement about 7, 65 percent of the requirement that has to be made to the imported. And so, the whole economy of the 
uh, your process that will depend upon the type of the crude you are processing. So, the these processes the sulfur recovery and sulfur um, desulfation process because in the um, process we are removing sulfur. So, that will play part. In the next lecture that will be on the petrochemical already we have discussed um, from the starting from the introduction to petroleum refining and then the crude oil evaluation distillation of the crude oil then the some of the um, further conversion process that we are using the refinery it may be the for the uh, your it may be the FCC hydrocracker or the catalytic reforming. So, all this process that we have discussed and then the next part that is the um, petrochemical because in the future you may have the petrochemical refinery not only the refinery because the concept of the refinery is also changing. And so, the as I told you the different come now we are talking about the gasoline free refinery we are talking about the GTL refinery, we are talking about the bio refinery. So, the next lecture will be on the introduction to the petrochemical industry.